From cleaning latrines to unwelcoming parishioners to cats, these saints and their stories are not as well known by the Universal Church as others, but are still inspiring or so unexpected that we had to share them. So here are six Now You Know Stories of the Saints. This topic was inspired by St. Joni of Arc's comment on our 2,000 subscribers video, so shout out to you, and let's begin with... Martin of Tours, poisoning himself. You all probably know something about St. Martin of Tours. If you don't, check out these two videos from Random Catholic Thoughts. Why, yes, it's never a bad time for a shameless self-promotion. Anyway, after his military career, St. Martin came to the turtle-shaped island now known as Isola del Benga to live as a hermit. According to legend, he ate roots and herbs. One time, he ate a helleborus plant, which would have been fine, except that it's poisonous. Supposedly, he was on the verge of death when he prayed to be spared and was miraculously cured. Even saints make mistakes. Perhaps he should have gone with the John the Baptist diet. Blessed Rani Maria Vitalil, victim of a hit. Born in 1954 in the Kerala region of India. From early on, she showed signs of piety, a strong work ethic, and care for all. She professed her vows as a member of the Syro-Malabar Franciscan Clarist Congregation in 1974. She proved to be an ideal member. Those who knew her describe her as possessing all the characteristics you look for in a saint. A genuine smile that comes quickly and frequently. Hardworking and devout. Lots of praying. One of her favorites was repeatedly saying the name of Jesus. She spent her life as a missionary and a social worker. She was successful in multiple regions of northern India, uplifting the poor who were being oppressed and exploited. Her efforts did not go unnoticed. In 1995, displeased landlords hired a man to kill Sister Rani, which he did by stabbing her over 40 times during a bus trip. She died saying that favorite prayer of hers, Jesus, Jesus. She was beatified in 2017. Mary McKillop, doing the jobs no one else will. As the mother general in charge of an entire institute of religious sisters, you'd think Mary McKillop would have been far too busy to do any of the more mundane domestic kind of tasks. You'd be right, and yet she gladly did that anyway. This includes ironing and washing, and the job that plenty of sisters vocally did not want to do. Some even suggested hiring someone to do it for them. Remember, in rural Australia in the mid to late 1800s, the places to relieve oneself would not be the spacious, tidy bathrooms with the modern plumbing available in the 21st century. Scrubbing toilets nowadays is not exactly glamorous, so imagine going into the muck, into the high heat for some cleaning. Speaking of going into less than pleasant areas, Mary is also known to have gone to visit prisoners. One of them was named Scotch Bella, who went from hard-drinking murderer to a sober, baptized, happily married woman. Another was a man on death row who had to be chained up. He went to his death without chain, and after having his confession heard, because Mary McKillop was able to reach through to him. Philip Neary, an unusual penance. The Apostle of Rome was famous for his charity, his piety, his likability, and his fondness for cats. At his oratory, he would instruct his brothers to take care of his pet cat and to provide detailed reports of its well-being, an unconventional but effective way of building humility. Philip Neri even made some people carry the cat around the city as an act of penance. Blessed Francisco de Paula Victor. People wouldn't accept communion from him. So you heard that last sentence, and you might be thinking something like, oh, was he accused of being a heretic or something? Well, no. It was simply because he was black. Born a slave in 1827 in Brazil, he was raised by his mother and started training as a tailor. But his dream was to be a priest. He did eventually make it to the seminary and was ordained. When Father Victor was assigned to his first parish, he was given a cold reception. The parishioners rejected the Eucharist because it came from the hands of a dark-skinned former slave. I bet the devil had a good laugh over that one. Victor was able to win them over with faith, humility, and of course, patience, to the point that when he was going to be transferred, the same parishioners strongly protested. He was beatified in 2015. Gabriel Pacenti, shooting a lizard. Italy, the 1860s. Because of the process of unification, there's plenty of internal strife. One day, a group of mercenaries arrive at a small village in central Italy looking to take provisions and maybe indulge their more barbaric tendencies. One such gun-wielding mercenary drags a woman from her home and is suddenly confronted by a young, cassock-clad man. Pacenti disarms the thug, and another after that, before a bunch of other of the invaders arrive. This leads to a moment reminiscent of an old western standoff. Pacenti demands they all leave. When a lizard scurries by, 
The Passionist brother casually fires a shot and perfectly blasts the reptile, killing it instantly. The invaders quickly decide to head out. Now, we can't verify with 100% certainty if this story actually happened, but we do know that St. Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows is looked upon as the patron saint of handgunners. So there you have it. What other stories of the saints like this do you want the world to know? We insist you put it in the comments section, even if you think people know it already. Name a pizza after a saint. For example, a Damien of Molokai is a Hawaiian pizza, ham, pineapple, cheese, or a St. Lawrence is a pizza that is cooked one side at a time. Only when the first side is done do you turn it over. And for more delightful yet random Catholic videos like this one, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.